Good evening, everybody. And thank you so much for taking the time out of uh, your day to join me online for yet another Wild Eye webinar. So this evening, as you would notice, um, due to the setting I'm sitting in, we have changed things up just a little bit just to make the online experience a little bit more enjoyable for all of you. And I hope that um, this evening runs smoothly. This is obviously the first time we are using all of this equipment. So please do let me know if uh, you can hear me okay, if you can see me okay. And this would be a great help. So just in uh, the chat column, just give me a thumbs up or yes, we can hear you okay. Um, I would greatly appreciate that. And hello, Andrew. Hello, Anne. Hey, Marlon. <laughs> it's great to see a lot of familiar names. And looking at the registrations that came in, there's a lot of new names on board. So welcome if this is your first time. It's great to have you on board. And thank you yet again for joining me here this evening. Um, let me just quickly go check in the comments. Okay, so it looks like audio is doing okay. Hello, Linda. Hello, Anne. Loud and clear. Good stuff, Kerry. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time. And I see there are still quite a few names um, joining. We are still a few minutes out. We're a little bit early, um, but yes, rather be early than late. They say being late is fashionable. I'm not too sure I would agree with that. I'm always that guy who, who gets to a venue 30 hours before the start of anything. <laughs> Coming, speaking of, I was here an hour before the webinar, so yeah, that just tells you a little bit more about Mike. <laughs> I like to get there well in advance, just in case. Um, but it looks like everyone can see me and hear me just okay, and for this, I am truly grateful. Um, but obviously, this evening, we've all signed up for this webinar, and we know why we are here. And we are here to, and here comes the magic and part of this new setup, to discuss back button focus and, of course, the benefits thereof. So there's a lot to discuss on this topic, and you can literally go on for hours um, discussing just this very function when it comes to your DSLR camera. But... This evening, I'm just going to highlight a few of them, um, and this will obviously lead into um, a webinar that I'll be hosting a little bit later in two weeks' time, uh, where I'll be discussing how to fine-tune your camera for wildlife photography. Now, before I jump into the short presentation that I've put together for, for all of you, if you had to think of two words as to how to describe back button focusing. I would love to see in the comments what your thoughts might be. If you have used um, back button focus, please in the Q&A tab um, or even in the chat, just leave me two words in which you would describe back button focus. I would love to hear your thoughts. Game changer. Okay, Kerry Mull off the bat. That is spot on. Thank you so much, Kerry, for, um, for sharing. And Tim, speed focus. It's definitely a speedy focus. And this is what back button focus really is. It is a massive game changer when it comes to your photography. I mean, I spent years photographing, not even knowing what back button focus was until the day I found out what it was. Got to, uh, got to grips with it, got used to it, and it changed my photographic journey greatly. And the reason for this, and with a lot of things in life, I mean, we just recently did a first aid course here in the Wild Eye office, and something that our instructor repeatedly mentioned is time is the enemy. Um, I'm sure that a lot of you in the corporates or whatever it may be, always sit in the day and say, yes, if only I had an hour or two longer in each day. Look, we could wake up an hour or two earlier to get things done, but we always tend to think that time is working against us. 
And when it comes to wildlife photography, time is critical in a way. And the reason I say this is because these animals are forever moving. It's not like a studio shoot where you can place your model, get them standing still, and they can stand like that for four hours so that you can get that one perfect shot. Wildlife is a totally different scenario. The quicker you can go about um, punching in some settings, focusing and taking the shot, only then will you see an improvement in your wildlife photography. Now, just to make it clear, back button focusing is not about getting sharper images. So using this function won't allow you to get a sharper looking image. It will just help you focus um, quicker and obviously take a few extra shots than you would have if you were not having to hassle with the default setting. But speaking of this default setting and before we run through this presentation, let me pick up my, um, my camera and run you through what the default setting would be when it comes to setting up or when it comes to yeah, setting up your camera for, for photography, any genre. And once you pick this guy up, take it out the box and assemble your lens, connect it to your camera, put in your battery, put in your SD cards and get ready to shoot. Usually this top dial over here will be set to auto. And this is obviously not what you want. You do not want to be sitting on auto. So we always recommend the guests that join us on Safari make use of um, either aperture mode or full manual in order to have more control over the camera. But we're not here to chat about that. We're here to chat about the focus mechanism when it comes to your photography. And by default, what this camera would do when you take it out the box is you will see that this button on the front over here, this is what we refer to as your shutter release button. And by default, this button will be set up to obviously focus. So when you purchase this camera, it's brand new, you take it out the box, pick it up to take your first photograph, your focus mechanism, if you don't go change, now that's a shot of the day. <laughs> um, if you don't go and change any settings in um, the menu system of this camera, you will find that this front shutter release button, when you half press it, this will then focus. And when you full press it, it will take your photograph. Now there are a few problems with this because it can kind of get in the way. If you don't understand how back button focus works, you probably would not have heard of this before. But basically, what happens is back button focus will separate these two functions because by default, the shutter release button, this guy will either focus when you half push and take your photograph when you fully depress this button by default. But if you go into the menu system and you set up your back button to be your focus mechanism, which is this button right up over here, you'll see it says AF on. Now, when we make use of the AF on button, um, this basically, if you set it up correctly, will separate your focus mechanism, your, your focusing mechanism, that's it, from the actual um, photographing mechanism, the shutter mechanism. And this will speed up the process dramatically for you. And there are a few benefits as to why you want to shoot like this, which I will explain in just a little bit. So let me put that camera back down before it falls. <laughs> um, but now, setting up back button focus isn't a difficult thing, and it is not a, a challenge. I will show you um, as, as to how to set up back button focus on your camera. But it just gets or takes a little bit of time to get used to photographing like this uh, because you obviously need an extra finger to uh, fulfill a purpose and this is to focus with your thumb and then to photograph with your um, shutter release button. But let's jump back into 
the presentation. Let me just go and get rid of that screen quickly so that it's not in everyone's way. And please feel free throughout this webinar, if you do have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the Q&A tab and I will get back to them and answering them as soon as I possibly can. So we are now going to run through this short presentation. And if I had to sum back button focus up in three words and how it would benefit you, the first word will be quality. Now obviously, only once you get to understanding how this works um, and to put it to its full use and maximize the ability, will you start realizing how your quality, your, your image quality, will improve. But this will obviously only take time. And it's something to me that came in, I would say, within about two to three days of shooting. And it became like a second nature that muscle memory really kicked in about a week in of shooting every day and obviously constantly reminding myself, use that back button to focus. Um, because you will find yourself in a situation where things get really exciting and you would then forget, okay, I have to focus for the back button. And you get to photographing, shooting, thinking that you are focusing and uh, because the default setting is obviously you focus with the shutter release button and you tend to mess up those images. Um, so before heading out on your next safari and you're going to set this up on your camera, be sure that you practice at home before you head out on safari so that that back button focus becomes second nature to you. Now the second word is flexibility. And flexibility will make a little bit more sense once we get into um, the four reasons as to why you should use back button focusing. And it just allows you to now manually flick between continuous focus and single focus. Um, and it really is a helpful tool. So flexibility is a big one. And then lastly is efficiency. So the more you shoot, the more effective this um, technique will become. And in turn, these three kind of work together because you will get better quality, because you'll have um, more flexibility, and those two obviously combined will then result in uh, better efficiency when it comes to you taking control over your DSLR camera. And the way and what back button focus is really going to help you with is the following. So I'm sure this grid looks quite familiar. I'm sure everyone who has photographed um, and used a DSLR camera, or any camera in fact, even an iPhone, um, or someone who's done a little bit of reading about photography and how to improve my photography, the basics to photography, will know exactly what this grid is. So three words, rule of thirds. So obviously this is like a tic-tac-toe grid divided into um, three columns and three rows, giving us nine blocks. And this is what we refer to as the rule of thirds. You can see the green um, crosses in this grid would be what we refer to as PowerPoints. Now, a PowerPoint is obviously where these lines and these grids intersect. And it, well, people would say the closer you can get one of these PowerPoints um, to your, your subject's either head, eye, main feature, the better. And some folk even say that you have to be spot on with it to make a perfect image, and that's not the case. The closer you can get those PowerPoints to your main features, the better. So looking at this, this image, I'm sure all of you would agree with me in saying that this is a very simple, yet appealing looking image. So it's just a bird standing on a massive block of ice and a beautiful blurred out background. So nothing spectacular about this image, but it's a great looking image. It really does look good. 
Reason being is if we overlay that grid, you will notice how that power point on the top left is hovering just beneath that bird's eye. So obviously when it comes to focusing on these animals, or on any subject that have eyes, you would want to focus on the eye. Because wherever you now go and focus, or wherever your focus points um, gather fo or um, capture its focus, this would be the sharpest point. And we often tell our guests, focus on the eye, because if the eye is sharp, generally the rest of the face would be sharp, but the eye will be the sharpest point. And having that, foc or that, that power point so close to the eye, and obviously making use of the right composition, the correct composition here, using the correct um, power points makes for an appealing looking image. And what I mean by using the correct power points is compositionally, what you want to try and achieve in your photograph is create negative space for this animal to look into. And what I mean by this is you'll see that this bird sitting on the left hand side of the frame looking to our right, its left, and this negative space is all this bare space to the right of the animal where there's just this blurred out background and a bit of ice in the foreground. This negative space is there for this animal to look and stare into. Say for example we place this bird on the two right hand power points, all the space that is not now or is not being utilized on the left hand side of this animal would be referred to as wasted space because there's no value added behind this animal. He's not looking backwards, he's looking to his left, our right, and if we had placed him on those right um, power points, he obviously would have been staring into a black wall basically on the side of that frame which is not the best thing to do so speaking of composition and speaking of utilizing back button focus using back button focus will definitely help you speed up your composition process um, and as I'd mentioned it will take a little bit of time to get used to it but trust me, it's a major game changer and it will improve your photography tenfold. So let's jump into a quick video. We can watch this and then I'm going to ask you what, or what is one thing that tends to be one of the largest um, or most difficult challenges to overcome when it comes to wildlife photography and let's see if any of you get this right. So now let's just watch this video and let's see what happens here. Okay, now that you've watched that video, if you wouldn't mind typing one word into the chat column and tell me what do you find being one of the most difficult things to understand or to overcome when it comes to wildlife photography. Let's have a quick look here. Who's got speedy fingers? I see there's a question in the Q&A tab, and I will get back to you in just a little bit there, Anonymous. Okay, so Adil says, tracking, keeping the subject in focus from Tim. All right, so these are very fair um, statements. This is definitely fair, focusing on a moving target, Kerry Mills. That's perfect. But now looking at that lion video, if you recall, she started off walking from the right of the frame towards the left and suddenly kind of banked back towards the right. And to me, one thing that keeps me on edge and on my toes 
and that's truly an exciting thing about wildlife photography, is the fact or um, the or the fact that these animals are so unpredictable, and that's the word to me that is quite a challenging thing to grasp when it comes to wildlife photography. You never know what this animal is going to do, and you never know, <coughs> excuse me, where it's going to move next, and. This leads me into one of the reasons as to why back button focus is extremely important. Because what it will allow you to do is that you can now easily switch between continuous and single autofocus. And this is, of course, if you're on uh, AI servo or continuous uh, autofocus, which I will chat about in a future webinar, the fine tune your camera for wildlife photography. Um, but it allows you to swap between this um, with ease. You don't have to change any buttons, switch any switches, nothing like that. It's just a matter of either holding and releasing that button. Now what I mean by this, when this camera is, or well, this camera is now set up on back button focus, what I mean by releasing the back button and then continue holding this back button is now if you look just a reminder it's this AF on button that I'm speaking about so when that animal is moving it's important to remember that your focus point should be on that animal's head because if that animal's moving in your frame it will be good to or recommend it to depress that AF on button keep it focused and keep it locked on and while you're holding it down track your subject and continue to photograph. But say for example that lioness was walking across the frame, she had stopped, you don't need to keep your finger depressed on that back button because what you would be able to do it is um, depress that back button, focus on the lioness, let go of that back button and then take your photograph. Remember, when you set up your back button focus, you deactivate the shutter or the, the autofocus from the shutter button and you apply it to that AF on button at the back over there. So what this will allow you to do is if that lioness walks, you keep your finger depressed, photograph, 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 and as she stops to look over her shoulder, which they so often do, because if she's walking from the right to the left, your focus points are going to be to the right of your camera. So somewhere around there. I don't know if you guys can see that. So there where that little block is. You want your focal points further to the right so that compositionally you can leave negative space to her left. Keep it depressed. Photograph, photograph, photograph. And as soon as she stops and looks over her left shoulder, you just depress your AF on button with your focus points on her head, you can then let go of this back button, the AF on button, and recompose to put that negative space behind her because she's now looking over her shoulder towards um, or over her own back. And this is one of the beauties about using back button focus, is that you can flick between continuous shooting and single point focus, and it will speed up the process instead of moving between settings and or half pressing and focus and, and setting up a button for focus lock. It's just a step extra and something for you to remember. So if you can just get used to back button focus, you will definitely speed up your process. But now let's jump into another video. And I see there is a question. So before we jump into the video, let me quickly answer a question or two over here. So can you set up more than one back button for autofocus? And can you assign different types of autofocus areas to each of them? So anonymous, yes, you can. So you can literally, you've got great flexibility with DSLR cameras. And the newer technology, particularly your mirrorless cameras, you can assign anything to almost any button on either your camera and or lens. So yes, you can set up multiple buttons to achieve back button focus. 
And what I tend to do is my AF on button. So let me just flick back to the screen. So my AF on button, which is the button furthest to the left or the center of the camera, will be my standard auto um, autofocus setting. <coughs> and the button just off to the right of it, which has this little star up above it, your exposure lock button, I usually set this up to be a zoned autofocus. So say for example I have a bird sitting up in the tree, taking off into a clear sky where there won't be any other distractions for my focus to lock onto, I will then depress that because then I have multiple auto-tracking um, auto focus on that particular subject so that when it does take off all I do is I keep which by default is set up as your exposure lock button I just um, will then depress that because I've set it up to a zoned um, and tracking auto um, tracking system I will then repetitively shoot while depressing this and regardless as to what my composition really is because sometimes these birds are super quick that autofocus and that tracking system will usually work well enough for me to focus on my subject um, throughout the majority of that scene. So a very good question there and thank you for for asking. And Anonymous had sent another, so let me just get into that question real quick. I love how back button focus allows a single shot servo and manual focus without having to change any settings. Yes, it definitely is a great function and something that I also really enjoy about using back button focus. So let's go into our second video and we can discuss one of the, um, or the second um, reason as to why we should make use of back button focus. You can see this was an exciting moment for me. I couldn't keep the camera still for the first couple of seconds. So one thing you can see here with regards to this video is that there are multiple animals moving within the frame. So if you photograph sports events or if you photograph wildlife um, or you photograph scenes where there is a lot of movement and potential risk of focus errors, back button focus will help you and allow you to eliminate these focus areas when you do have multiple animals within the same frame. Now looking at this I've obviously just kept my focus point on the lioness and the cubs in the background over there and I'm tracking them slowly and moving the camera um, kind of at the same rate as to which they are moving and therefore my focus is staying locked on the individuals at the back. But you'll soon notice that I move my focus point further down to the cub in the foreground and because my focus um, point is now hovering over the cub in the foreground this is the reason as to why the cub in the foreground is now in focus and the v individuals in the background are out of focus. And what I mean by 
back button focus can help you prevent focus errors is that these the autofocus systems in DSLR cameras nowadays are hypersensitive. They really are, and they do a great job in picking up um, your subjects when you want to try and focus on them, but they also sometimes don't get the job done the way you want it to, get, <laughs> want it to happen or to, to get it done. So what I'm trying to get to here is because we now have the ability to either continuously track and focus on a subject if it's moving towards you, away from you, or across your scene, by depressing that back button and continuously tracking and photographing, you do run a risk of if a animal walks in front of the subject you are focusing on, or if your animal walks behind a tree, obviously we won't photograph behind, uh, we can't photograph through trees, so we'll stop shooting. But say, for example, another animal walks up in front of your subject. Say, for example, there's a massive flock of vultures on a carcass, and there's one standing on top of the carcass, king of the castle, and there's continuous movement coming past that vulture in the foreground. Problem is, if you keep that your, your back button or your focus button now uh, depressed, every time an animal moves through um, your field of view of where your focus point is sitting, your camera might jump into a bit of an error because it's trying to pick up whatever it was that moved in the foreground. So the great thing with um, the back button focus is that we can now eliminate this. Reason being is because we can easily flick between continuous focus and single point focus. So all you would have to do is depress that back button, focus on the vulture standing on the carcass, let go of that back button, and then just continuously shoot. Remember, we've now deactivated the autofocus from the shutter release button, so therefore it's not going to refocus on the vulture in the, on, or on top of the mound or on top of the carcass. You can continuously shoot, and your camera is not going to try and refocus. As long as your vulture doesn't move closer or further away from you, you are good to go. Now moving on to our last video for this evening, looking at this crazy Ahina having a good time in a big body of water in the Amboseli. I love these creatures. They're always so entertaining. And the fact that they love water is just so incredible. It makes for some really cool looking images. So you would have noticed in this this video that the Ahina wasn't moving away from me. It wasn't moving closer towards me. It was kind of just hovering in that same area the whole time. And how back button focus worked to my advantage here is that I didn't have to continuously keep that back button depressed and focused on this Ahina. And so... What I'm trying to get to here is the third reason as to why we should be using back button focus is because back button focus now presents you with the ability to easily lock your focus. Pretty similar to the scenario I discussed from that previous video with vultures flying around and you don't want distracting elements moving in the foreground to result in a autofocus or a focusing error in this scene, how I would have captured this is because my animal is not really moving, it's pretty much in that same range of, uh, or the, the same focal range or focal distance, what will happen is when I shoot at a slightly larger aperture, I would have had to have focused on that animal once. So say, for example, I was sitting at, yes, if I recall correctly, I think I was sitting at f8, which gives me a slightly larger depth of field. I focused on that animal's head once as it put it in the water and I then let go of my back button because again this unpredictability is going to come in as soon as that animal lifts its head I'm sure you would have seen in that video it looked left it looked right 
looked straight ahead, stuck its head back in the water and did the same thing. And compositionally speaking, this focus lock really makes a big difference in scenes like this. Because you find your focus, you l release that back button, and then you just wait. Because you've now focused on that animal, you wait for it to lift its head out of the water, and as soon as it does, you can start photographing because we've deactivated the focus from the, the trigger or the shutter release. Regardless as to which way it moves its head, you just photograph and compose um, for wh whichever way this animal is looking. So looking at the animal, if it looks up, looks to the right, you compose accordingly for that. Looks left, you compose accordingly for um, to whatever the animal is doing. Um, so it really is of great help. Now the third, or the, excuse me, the, the fourth benefit as to why we should be shooting on back button or with making use of back button focus is the fact that it gives us this flexibility. Remember I mentioned that right in the beginning? And again, we'll also speed up the process without having to make too many changes. So let me pick the camera up again and discuss the final benefit as to why you want to make use of back button focus. So your back button focus will provide you with great flexibility here because you would not have to go and change any settings on your camera or on your lens such as AF to MF which stands for autofocus or manual focus you wouldn't have to go and flick between these two settings if you have set up your back button focus and you have to manually focus your camera to obviously achieve focus now a lot of the time, particularly when it comes to wildlife photography, you will find animals hiding in dense, thick, riverine type areas. And this is, an, or this is not an excuse to drop your camera and stop photographing. You can, compositionally speaking, create really cool and moody looking images if you try and photograph and make use of that moment. So if your camera was set up as its default setting where your focus mechanism is sitting on the front shutter button over here then yes you will have to change between autofocus and manual focus over here in order to make use of your manual focus ring whereas because we ha or we me and hopefully you after this webinar have set up our AF on button as our main focus button I would not have to go and flick this little button on and off um, or between autofocus and manual focus on the lens in order to make use of my uh, manual focus ring because I just won't go and touch my autofocus button which is AF on at the back here now. So with autofocus being deactivated from the shutter button I can just straight in go and manually focus my lens until I see okay there's great focus acquired here, take my shot, review the image, if I'm happy with it, I'm stoked, if I'm not happy with it, I try again. So autofocus is quite tricky, and particularly looking through a DSLR viewfinder, it can be quite tough to see if you've managed to um, get that focus on, on point. Um, but again, this just takes some practice, takes some time, but it will definitely speed up the process if you rather set up back button focus and not use your default setting by half pushing your shutter button to acquire your focus. So how to do this? Let's move into the last slide of this evening. Now looking at this, this is just um, pictures that I took of a, a Nikon uh, menu system and you will notice that in the top left you will find, well, there's, there's obviously different brands, um, camera brands, different camera of the same brand, but different models might have a slightly different way as to how to, um, one would set up uh, your back button focus. But I'm going to be focusing on the two main brands that are around today. Um, 
well for now at least and that is Nikon and Canon um, and I will run through this system with you real quick and answer um, or let you know how to set up your back button focus. So looking at your um, Nikon system over here you will see that you will in the top left find a custom setting menu in the back main menu of the camera. Once you find your custom setting menu come down to tab A which is autofocus scroll all the way down to A8 which is autofocus activation by default this will be on in order for you to make full use of back button focus on a Nikon you will have to push set or enter AF on and go and ensure that you put that off you do not want AF activation on the reason why I say this is because if you leave AF activation on you basically telling your Nikon camera to keep autofocus on this button over here your shutter release button you do not want that because if you go and set up the back button focus yes that's all fair and well but as soon as you focus on your subject let go and recompose as soon as you tap and touch your your shutter button again your shutter release button it's going to refocus so it's vital and very important that you go and put off AF activation there's another step when it comes to your Nikon cameras and this is now applying and setting up autofocus on your AF button on the back button so in that same custom menu which is a little white pe or red pencil scroll a bit further down past the auto focus bar all the way down to the letter F which will take you into controls then at F1 you will enter into custom control assignment and once you um, push set there it will take you into the little menu that you see on the bottom right and you'll see that the area that's highlighted in yellow and the great thing is when you flick through these in the menu system you have a little drawing of your camera and whatever button you are hovering over in the menu tab on the right will be highlighted on that little drawing so you'll see that the AF I have now on that particular camera I'm switched to on so that the AF button will be our focusing mechanism and remember in the previous step we deactivated the autofocus from the shutter button so this camera is now set up um, fully um, or 100% um, for back button focusing and the only thing your shutter button will do is capture the photograph for you so it's important to do those two steps go turn off AF activation and go and turn on AF on in the custom controls menu extremely important to do that because it's one thing doing setting up the back button focus if you do not <laughs> deactivate the focus from the front shutter release button you're gonna find yourself running into <laughs> a few problems and it might be a little bit frustrating but now when it comes to the Canon setup it is a little bit um, simpler it's a, it's a quicker uh, workflow when it comes to setting up a Canon's back button focus now what you would do is up here you will find your menu button and by tapping menu you will go into the interface of the menu and you will see that you can either toggle between menus with your little joystick or and this is a shortcut and I don't think a lot of people know is you'll see there's a letter Q on the back of the camera and by tapping Q this will take you through the multiple menu systems but you want to come into the second to last menu system and in that menu system you will find in the second 
little menu system within that main menu, you will find custom controls. By entering into custom controls by pushing set, again, you will have a little graph and picture of how this camera is set up. And as soon as I move between all of those little buttons, you will see how that picture of my camera is changing. And each little tab that I'm hovering over will be highlighted on that little um, camera display over there. So vitally important here, the two steps that we have to now um, complete on a Canon camera is deactivate the autofocus from the shutter release button and activate the autofocus onto the back button over here. And these are the very first two tabs. So in the top left of that menu, you will have to go into your shutter release button deactivate because by default it will be sitting at let's just get that to focus it'll be sitting over there which is AF and metering we want to come to the side and just select metering come down one this is your AF on button and you want to ensure that your AF on is selected you can then exit that menu and your camera will be set up for back button focus and um, it's just very important to remember when you get out into the field to shoot again you won't be requiring focus or acquiring focus with your your front shutter release you'll be acquiring focus with the back button so something to get used to it's not difficult and trust me it will change your photography for the better give it a go and if you are having issues and struggling Please, I'm an email away. I'll happily answer your questions. And uh, we can maybe set up 30 minutes online. And uh, I can get you answering your questions and helping you along this process. I see there's another question that's coming from Adil over here. How do you set up the... Okay, he's put the star button for zone selection. So in that same area within the menu system... <coughs> you can um, go into your custom control setting let me just flick over to that and you will see just beneath your AF on selection or menu tab you will have a, a little star I don't know if you can see it too well there but you will you will see this little star um, setting within your custom controls tab if you push set to go into that you can go and hover over metering and AF on which you'll see in there there we go and if you then go and tap the info tab if you tap the info tab you can assign and register particular autofocus points and set up in that little area so not all DSLRs can do it your, mo your most recent or, or newer cameras will be able to do it um, and it, it will allow you to, to set up a zoned or multiple or zoned or manually selected um, focus points so I hope that answers your question Adil I thank you for the question it was a good one and I do not see any more questions that have come in. Please, if you do have more questions, feel free to drop them in that Q&A tab. If you can't think of anything right now or off the bat, please feel free to um, mail me. I'm just an email away. I will happily assist you and answer your questions. We can set up a call. And um, please do remember that this particular webinar is a build up into fine tuning your um, camera for wildlife photography which I'll be hosting on the 21st of October um, please do go look for it on the Wildlife website and uh, I look forward to seeing you all there that's going to be a great webinar where I'll run you through exactly how I set my camera up for wildlife photography and I will answer any questions that you might have 
with regards to why and how I set my camera up. I see there are two more questions that just came in. Uh, will this work on a 7D Mark II? Yes, I do. Um, if you jump into custom settings, go onto that exposure lock key, which is the little star, push the info button, and you will see uh, the options available there. It will definitely work on a 7D Mark II. And then Bianca, do all Canon cameras have the option? I have a 70D. So 70D will definitely have the option for back button focus, and it will be... I know. I think the the menu system in a 70D. I haven't used one too frequently or uh, regularly, should I say? Um, I think the menu system might be a little bit different, uh, but the terminology will be the same. So just look for custom settings or custom controls, and you will definitely be able to set up your 70D um, on a back button focus setup. If not, please get in touch, email me, um, and I can assist you in setting that up for you Bianca. Thank you for the question. I really do appreciate it. And there are no more questions that have come through. Uh, you're most welcome Linda. Thank you so much for joining. I really do appreciate everybody's time this evening. Um, and as I mentioned if things were a little bit jumpy um, in terms of maneuvering between cameras, this is a brand new setup. I hope that you guys have enjoy the new look, the new feel as to how the WildEye webinars are going to look in the future. Um, I really enjoyed it. It's, it's just so incredible being in here, real studio vibe. And we'd love to hear from you. Email us as to what your thoughts were with regards to this new look and feel. And um, we look forward to hosting you in future webinars. Um, it always gets me nice and excited connecting with all of you from all across the globe um, on this online platform. And um, yeah, that's it for me this evening. And as I would mentioned, my next webinar is on the 21st of October. October. Fine-tune uh, your camera for wildlife photography. I look forward to seeing you there. And um, yeah, that's also going to be a great game-changing webinar. And um, I have got one more question that just came in from Nicole. Will there be an option to look to look this webinar aligned. So I think Nicole's asking, is there an option to see this webinar online? Yes, um, it will be loaded onto um, YouTube and you can find it on YouTube in the next, or by the end of this week, I would say, or early into the new. Um, but it will definitely be live and available online. Um, but I thank you all again. It really has been a pleasure. And I hope that you have a great day further or great evening wherever you are in this world. Um, time for me to now sign off. And uh, yeah, thanks again and chat soon. Bye-bye.